Chapter Sixteen of Bellamy, or the History of a Scoundrel. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Geeson. Bellamy, or the History of a Scoundrel, by Guy de Maupassant. Translator unknown. Chapter Sixteen. Divorce during the remainder of the winter the duroise often visited the walters georges too frequently dined there alone madeleine pleading fatigue and preferring to remain at home he had chosen friday as his day and madame walter never invited any one else on that evening it belonged to bel ami often in a dark corner or behind a tree in the conservatory madame walter embraced the young man and whispered in his ear i love you i love you i love you desperately but he always repulsed her coldly saying if you persist in that i will not come again toward the end of march people talked of the marriage of the two sisters rose was to marry dame rumour said count de la tour ivelin and suzanne the marquis de cazolles the subject of suzanne's possible marriage had not been broached again between her and georges until one morning the latter having been brought home by m walter to lunch he whispered to suzanne come let us give the fish some bread they proceeded to the conservatory in which was the marble basin containing the fish as georges and suzanne leaned over its edge they saw their reflections in the water and smiled at them suddenly he said in a low voice it is not right of you to keep secrets from me suzanne she asked what secrets bel ami do you remember what you promised me here the night of the fete no to consult me every time you received a proposal well well you have received one from whom you know very well no i swear i do not yes you do it is from that fop of a marquis de cazolles he is not a fop that may be but he is stupid he is no match for you who are so pretty so fresh so bright she asked with a smile what have you against him i nothing yes you have he is not all that you say he is he is a fool and an intriguer she glanced at him what ails you he spoke as if tearing a secret from the depths of his heart i am i am jealous of him she was astonished you yes i why because i love you and you know it then she said severely you are mad bel ami he replied i know that i am should i confess it i a married man to you a young girl i am worse than mad i am culpable wretched i have no possible hope and that thought almost destroys my reason when i hear that you are going to be married i feel murder in my heart you must forgive me suzanne he paused the young girl murmured half sadly half gaily it is a pity that you are married but what can you do 
it cannot be helped he turned towards her abruptly and said if i were free would you marry me she replied yes bel ami i would marry you because i love you better than any of the others he rose and stammering said thanks thanks do not i implore you say yes to any one wait a while promise me somewhat confused and without comprehending what he asked she whispered i promise du roy threw a large piece of bread into the water and fled without saying adieu as if he were beside himself suzanne in surprise returned to the salon when du roy arrived home he asked madeleine who was writing letters shall you dine at the walters friday i am going she hesitated no i am not well i prefer to remain here as you like no one will force you then he took up his hat and went out for some time he had watched and followed her knowing all her actions the time he had awaited had come at length on friday he dressed early in order as he said to make several calls before going to m walter's at about six o'clock after having kissed his wife he went in search of a cab he said to the cabman you can stop at number seventeen rue fontaine and remain there until i order you to go on then you can take me to the restaurant du coq faisan rue lafayette the cab rolled slowly on du roy lowered the shades when in front of his house he kept watch of it after waiting ten minutes he saw madeleine come out and go toward the boulevards when she was out of earshot he put his head out of the window and cried go on the cab proceeded on its way and stopped at the coq faisan georges entered the dining-room and ate slowly looking at his watch from time to time at seven-thirty he left and drove to rue la rochefoucauld he mounted to the third story of a house in that street and asked the maid who opened the door is m guibert de l'orme at home yes sir he was shown into the drawing-room and after waiting some time a tall man with a military bearing and grey hair entered he was the police commissioner duroy bowed then said as i suspected my wife is with her lover in furnished apartments they have rented on rue des martyrs the magistrate bowed i am at your service sir very well i have a cab below and with three other officers they proceeded to the house in which duroy expected to surprise his wife one officer remained at the door to watch the exit on the second floor they halted duroy rang the bell and they waited in two or three minutes georges rang again several times in succession they heard a light step approach and a woman's voice evidently disguised asked who is there the police officer replied open in the name of the law the voice repeated who are you i am the police commissioner open or i will force the door the voice continued what do you want duroy interrupted it is i it is useless to try to escape us the footsteps receded and then returned 
georges said if you do not open we will force the door receiving no reply he shook the door so violently that the old lock gave way and the young man almost fell over madeleine who was standing in the antechamber in her petticoat her hair loosened her feet bare and a candle in her hand he exclaimed it is she we have caught them and he rushed into the room the commissioner turned to madeleine who had followed them through the rooms in one of which were the remnants of a supper and looking into her eyes said you are madame claire madeleine du roi lawful wife of monsieur prosper georges du roi here present she replied yes sir what are you doing here she made no reply the officer repeated his question still she did not reply he waited several moments and then said if you do not confess madame i shall be forced to inquire into the matter they could see a man's form concealed beneath the covers of the bed duroy advanced softly and uncovered the livid face of monsieur la roche mathieu the officer again asked who are you as the man did not reply he continued i am the police commissioner and i call upon you to tell me your name if you do not answer i shall be forced to arrest you in any case rise i will interrogate you when you are dressed in the meantime madeleine had regained her composure and seeing that all was lost she was determined to put a brave face upon the matter her eyes sparkled with the audacity of bravado and taking a piece of paper she lighted the ten candles in the candelabra as if for a reception that done she leaned against the mantelpiece took a cigarette out of a case and began to smoke seeming not to see her husband in the meantime the man in the bed had dressed himself and advanced the officer turned to him now sir will you tell me who you are he made no reply i see i shall have to arrest you then the man cried do not touch me i am inviolable duroy rushed towards him exclaiming i can have you arrested if i want to then he added this man's name is la roche mathieu minister of foreign affairs the officer retreated and stammered sir will you tell me who you are for once that miserable fellow has not lied i am indeed la roche mathieu minister and pointing to georges's breast he added and that scoundrel wears upon his coat the cross of honour which i gave him duroy turned pale with a rapid gesture he tore the decoration from his buttonhole and throwing it in the fire exclaimed that is what a decoration is worth which is given by a scoundrel of your order the commissioner stepped between them as they stood face to face saying gentlemen you forget yourselves and your dignity madeleine smoked on calmly a smile hovering about her lips the officer continued sir i have surprised you alone with madame du roi under suspicious circumstances what have you to say nothing do your duty the commissioner turned to madeleine 
do you confess madame that this gentleman is your lover she replied boldly i do not deny it that is sufficient the magistrate made several notes when he had finished writing the minister who stood ready coat upon arm hat in hand asked do you need me any longer sir can i go duroy addressed him with an insolent smile why should you go we have finished we will leave you alone together then taking the officer's arm he said let us go sir we have nothing more to do in this place an hour later georges du roi entered the office of la vie francaise monsieur walter was there he raised his head and asked what are you here why are you not dining at my house where have you come from georges replied with emphasis i have just found out something about the minister of foreign affairs what i found him alone with my wife in hired apartments the commissioner of police was my witness the minister is ruined are you not jesting no i am not i shall even write an article on it what is your object to overthrow that wretch that public malefactor georges placed his hat upon a chair and added woe to those whom i find in my path i never pardon the manager stammered but your wife i shall apply for a divorce at once a divorce yes i am master of the situation i shall be free i have a stated income i shall offer myself as a candidate in october in my native district where i am known i could not win any respect were i to be hampered with a wife whose honour was sullied she took me for a simpleton but since i have known her game i have watched her and now i shall get on for i shall be free georges rose i will write the item it must be handled prudently the old man hesitated then said do so it serves those right who are caught in such scrapes end of chapter sixteen recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey